Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to another episode of Beer Analysis 101 with your hosts, Maxwell Starr and our beautiful castmates. And I, I, I take that, you know, very liberally. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at Mill Street Imperial Coffee Porter tonight. Ooh, this is something new that was in the box right here. The Winter Mix Pack from Mill Street. First time it's ever been bottled. Before we get down to it, let's introduce the panel. We'll start with Greg Bielowski. That's how you pronounce your, your last Hi. name. Hi, Nicholas Lowe. How are you doing today? Thanks. I'm not doing too bad. Now it's gotten uncomfortable. Moving right along, we got Chris. How are you doing, Chris? On the 10th. Oh, did you freeze up again? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> uh, suckers. That no, works. I'm not doing that two weeks in a row. No Well way. played. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Right on. And, of course, last but definitely not, well, the king of beer tube anymore. We've got the former king of beer tube. We've got uh, Lee from Hoogly Beer Reviews or what, what used to be Hoogly Beer Reviews. Hoogly Whiskey Reviews or something. Yeah, booze Reviews? I don't know. And my channel says <laughs> Lee Russell. That's about it. <laughs> but I'm. But thanks for asking how I'm doing. Thanks for asking how I'm doing, Nick. I'm. I'm the happiest I've ever oh, been man. in my life. He's literally. I find that, I find that difficult. Yeah, there's two redheads. <laughs> You've got at least one redhead on your cock right now. That's why you're smiling. Is it, is it, is it, is it opposite face. day today? It's, uh, it's opposite That's day, right? Opposite. <laughs> what a bizarre anyway. world. I love you guys. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, after the introductions, let's move on to a short history of a Mill Street's Imperial Coffee Porter. Mill Street Brewery is a brewery from Toronto, Ontario, founded in December of 2002, named after its original location on 55 Mill Street in Toronto's historic distillery district. The distillery district uh, being the shops and restaurants that now occupy the Victorian era heritage buildings at the former site of the Gooderim and Warts Distillery which was once the largest distillery in North America. I think I wrote that down right. Anyway, eventually in uh, 2006, Mill Street moved to its, uh, its brewing operations in Scarborough, Ontario, and reopened the original Mill Street Brewery as a uh, brew pub. Uh, in 2011, uh, Mill Street leased a historic grist mill in Ottawa and converted it into their, their first outside the city Mill Street brew pub. And also notable is in 2011, uh, they uh, they opened their the, they became the first craft brewer to open up a brew pub at a major Canadian airport, which is a place I've personally been to twice. And you can check channel videos if you want. Most recently, uh, in October 2015, Mill Street was purchased by the Labatt Brewery, a subsidiary of AB InBev. The takeover in large, uh, by the large Belgian conglomerate resulted in uh, the Ontario Craft Brewers Association revoking their membership and it also damaged Mill Street's street cred with some craft beer fans. Because they're not, yeah, they're they're not craft cool beer anymore. anymore. They're crafty now. Um, but that's all right. I mean, I, I find as long as the beer tastes good to me. Uh, anyway, um, most recently, and uh, sorry, uh, Mill Street's other products include their, their popular Tanko sale, uh, the Organic Lager, their West Coast IPA, 100th Meridian Organic Amber Lager, and uh, cobblestone stoves, and of course, you can't forget the Polish sex juice, the vanilla porter, which I seriously yeah. pull, makes it down here in New Brunswick, so we can do it. Oh, uh, it's do going this. down because you know, because you know, do you not be able to... in New Brunswick, Nick. It's been here several times before. It, uh, I think, the last couple of years, it hasn't shown up. I really want to want a, a couple cans of it. To be honest, Lee, can like, you can really... you get the Polish sex juice, Lee? No, uh, we right. uh, just like Nick, we could tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, but I, I think it's actually, I think that one's actually a, a winter seasonal from uh, Mill Street as well. Maybe yeah. um, moving right along. So one of their newest releases is the Mill Street Imperial Coffee Porter, included in the Mill Street Winners Mix Pack, along with five other beers, which also includes I didn't bring the bottle with me, but the McKinney Pineapple IPA, which I don't know maybe if Joe gets it, I'll do a review with him or you know, do a chat or something. Um, anyway, this uh, Imperial Coffee Porter was. Uh, is it, it was it first brewed at the Mill Street Brew Pub in late 2016. It's an imperial version of their famous coffee porter, which is one of the Mill Street's very first brews back in 2002. Uh, it's made with Balzac's coffee, a coffee roaster that was also one of the original tenants in the distillery district with Mill Street in 2002. So they these brewer and the coffee roaster have a long history. 
Yeah, there were the Balzac is kind of like a hipster coffee place, and I, I don't know if it's only Toronto, but I, I'm not aware that it's outside of Toronto. Are you trying to say my last name? Never mind. No, not Clitzack. Clit, Clitzack. Clit, 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 clit. You got to say it with Clit. Uh, uh, yeah, one, anyway. one's, one's with a Clit, one's with a ball. <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, so the Imperial version weighs in at 7 ABV and 30 IBUs, which is seemingly mild uh, increase uh, over from the regular coffee porters. It's just 5%. like a baby Imperial. Yeah, it's not. I mean, technically 7% is an Imperial something, but it's not extreme. Not, not my Imperial. Uh, it's not my yeah, not, imperial. A, not a stream enough to be modern interpretation of Imperial, but then <laughs> Mill Street. This is, this Mill, is very much the... Those, I was just gonna say this is very much the calculated uh, big company owned uh, pseudo craft brew imperial. That, that's kind of what you would expect. Yeah, it's one way to say it. I find it's largely in the same kind of vein as what what um, Samuel Adams does, where they do things well but not exceptional. This Nothing won't really over the top. This this won't this won't scare the tourists, but it'll also appease the the hipsters who still drink Mill Street. Mm, the, the hipsters that pop along the uh, how, the uh, Toronto waterfront. Anyway, moving right along, let's uh, get down to uh, what's your personal history with this uh, with this beer, uh, Craig? <laughs> well, I have absolutely none because this is a beer that's only been out for a month or two. Yeah, but what about uh, the uh, the original coffee porter? The original coffee porter I have had, I think I've had it once, maybe twice. I don't remember it because it was way, way back in probably 2012 when I first started drinking craft beer. I don't remember particularly liking it, but back then I didn't really like stouts to begin with, so I probably wouldn't have liked it. So that's my basically non-history. I've had Balzac's coffee before. It's good. I'm not really a big coffee drinker. It seemed, coffee. seemed fine. How about you, Chris? Or are you frozen again? Uh, my history on either is non-existent. I've never had the uh, actual coffee porter from Mill Street, and I've never had it, obviously. This is only a month old here, so. A really uh, short history. Balzac's coffee. You know what? I'm over 3. I've never had Balzac's coffee, so now we're over 3. I'm useless. That's uh, all right. Joke. But I, I would Free think like, an avid coffee drinker such as yourself would probably want to try a Balzac's coffee at some point. Yeah, sure. Why not? But, but, yeah. but like I, I said, I don't think they're outside of Toronto. Right now. I got my endorsement with Timmy's right now. So. That's right. Mm. You're, endorsed. You're going for that corporate sponsorship. Yeah, baby. Mm. It's true. All right. Lee, what you saying? Uh, my, his my history goes back to you sending me a bottle of the regular porter to review. And I gave that fairly good grades. I gave it basically a 7 out of 10. Um, and I liked it quite a bit. I thought it was a really solid porter. And now we have this. And my continuity with uh, Mill Street has been broken by several years. So um, even though I haven't had this, I haven't had, really had a Mill Street product in a long time. So I not really wasn't really sure what to expect. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, just like you said, your your personal history starts with me. Um, my personal history, of course, starts with me as well, but around the same time, because I think the, the uh, we got the coffee porter in either like six packs or or singles or something, and I bought a I bought a bunch around the same time and sent you one, uh, and I think it was around either winter twenty eleven or spring twenty twelve, because that's that it was spring twenty twelve when I posted my review on my channel, and yeah. I remember I remember liking it, but I didn't think it was like absolutely superb. But, no, it was, uh, it was it was solid. Like it's you know like a very good example of the style, but nothing that was going to blow your mind or anything like that, right? Yeah, exactly. I was excited more on the thought like, hey, here's a porter, here's a bunch of coffee in it. I love coffee. I love porters, and I'm like, oh boy, this sounds so good. And then I drink it. And I'm like, eh, it's okay. It did a good job oh. as it, it did a good job as far as coffee beers go because sometimes a lot of coffee beers they'll end up they'll they'll end up tasting like too much like green coffee beans. Mm. Or they'll be really, really thin and just kind of bitter, and they won't have much going for them. Uh, hmm. That was at least one of the more flavorful ones that actually made it work in a beer that, that I'd had. So, yeah. All right. Well, moving uh, moving along. Let's go to the thoughts, Greg. What do you think of this? <clears throat> Is somebody keeping score? Nope, no, no one's good. keeping score. It's good. It's nothing special. It's a good, solid porter. I get coffee. I 
get a little bit more bitterness of the coffee than I'd prefer. I get chocolate in this. I don't know why, but I do. Um, mm. And it's a little bit thin for what I'd want an Imperial. And of course, I am judging this as an Imperial, even though I question its Im Imperial Imperialosity. Is that a word? Uh, I question <laughs> it, but priority. but judging it by what they call it, I mean, I'd like I'd like something that's a lot has a lot more body to it, has a lot more flavor to it. Um, but again, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just nothing spectacular. I mean, in terms of the style, an imperial coffee porter. I'm going to sort of lump coffee porters and stouts together because that's what I do. And I'm going to say for an imperial coffee dark beer, we'll call it. Um, I'd say it's like a six. It's passable, but it's certainly nothing special. For my own personal preference, probably a... Hmm, Seven. Let's even go seven five. You know what? I enjoy it, but it's mm. just nothing. Nothing special to really make me that impressed by it. Yeah, I know exactly. Um, Chris, what you thinking? Okay, so we add a little bit more booze to it, and it becomes imperial. You know what? I can taste the extra booze. I can already hear it in the comments. Joe's gonna fucking go all over this, but you know what? <clears throat> Give me the original coffee porter. I'm probably gonna like it. I really enjoy the taste of this. Um, and I, I'm and with Greg, I get it as well. I get a little bit of that chocolate in there as well as the coffee and, uh, being a big coffee drinker. Yeah. I like this. I really like <clears throat> this, uh, for the style Imperial coffee Porter. I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to determine what kind of a style it is because me being a noob and I use that every excuse every time I'm online here or whatever, but you know what, uh, give it a seven, seven out of 10 for style. Hmm. And personal preference, you drop the ABV, this is getting a higher score, but for what it is as an Imperial Coffee Porter, I'm going to give this a seven and a half. Cool. So that was seven and seven and a half, was it? Mm -hmm. Cool. Lee, let's move on to you. All right, so this tastes, uh, this is basically what Chris just said. This, this tastes like a regular version of their porter with more alcohol in it. Um, that's essentially what I'm getting here. Uh, I wasn't. I'm, I was trying to sort of think back and forth in my mind what uh, what this is. I'm getting is it just extra bitterness from the roast, or is it astringency from the alcohol? And I'm sort of I'm sort of weighing <clears throat> on the uh, astringency from the alcohol uh, as far as this goes. Uh, it's not. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not overpowering or anything like that. But you, it seems like you definitely can taste the seven percent a little bit there. Uh, the body is a little too thin to hold that up. The flavor itself overall is pretty damn good, though, I'd say. Um, I mean, if you like coffee, you like this. Uh, it, it, uh, Greg is right in that there is a bit of a chocolate thing coming here as well from the malts. So it does have a sort of um, baker's chocolate side of mocha kind of thing. Like, it's not sweet enough where you could just say genuine mocha, but it, it, it's got kind of that baker's chocolate kind of thing going on. Um yeah, over, overall for style, it's it's got to be just a little bit above borderline for me for any sort of imperial stout or porter. So I'd I'd have to sit it at like a six for style. Um, as a beer that I would enjoy drinking, you know, honestly, no better or worse than uh, what I rated the original porter from these guys. Uh, I I give it a seven out of ten. Well, there you go. Uh, my personal thoughts on it. I kind of, uh, I see what you're talking about by a little bit of uh, an astringency from the roast, or you can't decide whether it's a roast or the alcohol. I kind of have a feeling that it gets from the uh, the roastiness because it's really reminiscent of like a, a dark roast coffee or an espresso or something. Mm -hmm. um, I do get a little bit of like a dark chocolate or cherry booziness, like from the chocolate liqueur right. candy in the very back. That uh, yeah, it's a bit boozy. And at, actually, the last sip I took as it was evaporating, it was kind of. I get maybe a not a burn, but a, a feeling of of alcohol in the back of my throat. Like it's not like harsh like a burn, but it's it, it it's warming. Yeah, yeah. I just said warming. That's uh, but overall, I find it's very smooth. A um, bit of cola, bit of coffee, roasty finish I'm on sorry, it. Did, I'm sorry, did you say smooth or smooth? Smooth. smooth? Yes. No, okay. I said smooth, but I mean smooth. Hashtag smooth. Um, the the downside is I find it. It's, it's thin, and it's also kind of plain. Like, it's not super complex. And it's not like I expected a coffee porter or Mill Street to be complex. I just find it's it's not uh, absolutely exciting. 
Prefix yeah, it, 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 again, it feels um, it feels like big corporate imperial, and more than it feels like actual craft imperial. Hmm. But I, when it, it calls itself imperial, and I find it it is a bit heavier than the, like the Mill Street original, like the original coffee porter. But I find it it's not imperial enough. They could have done more. This this is this is a this is a tourist beer. Uh, this is a <laughs> version of a tourist imperial beer, essentially, is what it is. Or or just a, a good decent beer to put in their mix pack. You know, Uncle, Uncle, you know, you're 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 on you're on tour from the states, and Uncle Cletus wants to get a little adventurous with his with his. I'm going to have me some of them craft beers up in Canada. <laughs> well, I'm frankly, I, I, I this want shit. my I want a strong. One. What the hell is this? Shit? Bat blue. Like nothing like right. Ale, Ale Smith Speedway Stout. Considering some of the shit they have put in their mix packs, this is very good. It is, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that. that's totally I'm, true. Yeah, so, this mixed pack is uh, is going to be hit and miss for me. I mean, I kind of wish I didn't pay fourteen fifty for the mixed pack. Sorry, but you know what? But I, don't, if, I don't know. I don't know how many of those beers. I don't know how many of those beers you've had, but it's an opportunity to try up to six different beers. You know, yeah. I understand that. I've, I've had a, I've had a bunch of them, but the thing is, though, I mean, and you know what? And and this is I don't know if this is for everyone, but I mean, I don't I don't like picking up. If I have a beer, if there's a beer in something in a pack like that, and it's not available by the bottle alone by itself, then kind of pisses me off. I wish you could just try that, everything in the bottle. That, that's the reason why, if it wasn't for this analysis, I very likely would not have bought the six-pack, because I feel the same way. Put it in a can, let me buy one of it. Well, before I get interrupted here, I was I haven't even given my ratings yet. We love hmm. you, Nick. Sorry, Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. It's sorry. Right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so, over like, for the style, uh, I find that... It, like as if you could if you lump in together any coffee spiked uh, uh, dark beers like porters, dark ales, stouts, I find it okay. I'll give it for a style. I'll give it a seven. Uh, overall, I'm enjoying it, so it gets a seven in that department as well. Yeah. All right. What's the averages, Nick? What's going on? It's a six well, and a, know, six and a half for uh, the for the style rating. And round it down. What'd you give it overall, Nick? A seven? A seven. Probably like seven point two five. To use my calculator my later. And it's a set it's a seven point two five for overall enjoyment. <laughs> I just looked at Joe's comment. Fuck you, Joe. That's funny. Yeah. But it's uh, anyway. seven five, so it's not a seven and a half. Yeah. He said seven out of ten. Yeah. Anyway, let's move to the comments. Actually, who's who's been chatting in the chat? I know Joe's here, there instead of here. We got Craig, Peter, Joe. No, I'm chatting myself. Jace is here. How you doing, Jace? Right. Yeah. Hello, Fake all. And we're, and we're all talking about Joe, and we're praying for Joe. Apparently, but not praying for Joe, of course. Yeah. So there. Are, uh, so. so. Uh, you want to read the comments or uh... yeah, go, go ahead, Lee. We need somebody to read the comments. And she's okay. Like... So there's there's a lot of dumb banter here that I'm not even going to repeat. <laughs> uh, Aver Average <laughs> Joe says, "I miss you guys." We miss um, you. Kind of. I don't. He really does. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Joe is asking if Greg's saying he had ball sacks in his coffee before. What the fuck? <laughs> you, I have, but I usually have to wait for the coffee to cool down a bit. Okay. Um, Tea bag the, see, the clue, uh, Peter the Clueless Drinker says Balzac did a collaboration with von Freud in Germany in the form of a coffee lager. Mm. Mm. Sounds good. Interesting. I wonder if that's, I wonder if that coffee lager has more body than this beer does. Um, it might. And, in uh, the, let's see, uh, Joe says it's okay if you taste all the booze and anything over two percent, Chris. No big deal. <laughs> Your baby palate will improve one day. <laughs> uh, um, average Joe says Mill Street is the Goose Island of Canada. Let's be honest. Without a Bourbon County comparison, yeah, he's not, he's not wrong. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there's no equivalent. Uh, Jace Westcott says Chris is spoiled with singles living in Ontario. Kind yeah. Both beer and women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Average Joe said Nick is going to give this beer a 7 out of 10, just like every review. 
And he did. And then, boom. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. On both style and not. <laughs> and and Joe uh, Joe seems uh, incredulous about the idea of letting Greg do math. So um, I didn't do it. My calculator did. Yeah, and Jace Westcott wants to know what the beer is next week. Discuss. It is going to be Stella Artois. We are doing Stella. Because Stella is actually, see the Christmas star on the bottle? That's actually a Christmas beer. All right, listen. We or not. We had a poll and and, and, a, and We got and two was, polls. And I, did not, and I, I did not you vote for someone else. One, but I voted for someone else. But that's okay. We'll do it anyway. I voted for Jody and Megan next. Okay, so I'm proud, and it's a privilege being on this panel for the annual Weiss's thing that we're doing here. Yeah. What? Because you got outvoted? Yeah. Are you getting all bitter? Yeah. And the, and the, the poll, <laughs> the poll is democratic. So unless you want to start a coup of some sort. Uh, Plus, we're gonna do we're gonna do the other one next huh. the next week after anyway. I think mm -hmm. as long as we can get it. All right. We'll leave that one next. The one for two weeks from now is a mystery because two weeks from now is the week. Just before Christmas, so it's going to be something nice. Right, anyway, jingle some bells. Jingle some jingle balls. Um, yeah. So, does anybody else have any more comments about the beer? We have any more last minute comments in the chat? Let's open um, up the comments from everybody. Thanks I would. Us. I would. I would say. Um, <laughs> if we're if doing this was made by the, beer next week, because Joe apparently didn't want me to do it. If, if this if this was made by the old uh, Mill Street. I would probably buy this in a six pack if they released it, but considering it's the new Mill Street and this kind of is underwhelming, it's not worth seeking out as far as I'm concerned. Even though I gave it fairly good marks, it's not worth seeking out in the mix pack. If you can get it some other way, just don't don't be paying for their goddamn mix pack because they're a rip off. I'm glad I tried it. I still think if you just I, you know, I will I, say though. Yeah, go, no, ahead, go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no you go, go ahead, Nick. Okay. No, 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 you go ahead. No, go, go ahead, go. Greg. You go, Greg. I go. Okay, I can go. Ahead. I'm just gonna say, I think it's actually a pretty good six pack uh, this year around because you know, at the two light beers, whatever they're light, you know, you can give them to your wife mm -hmm. or something or husband. I don't want to be sexist. Whoever drinks the light. Whoa, beer. yeah, Greg, yeah, went there. But you know, but you know what? Their IPA and their Tank House are, and they're they're both pretty good beers. I have not tried the other beer, the what is the something IPA, some pineapple shit or whatever, whatever the hell it is. I I haven't tried it, but hopefully that's decent too. So I'd say overall, it's a pretty good six pack if you have to buy a Mill Street six pack. What are you, what are you saying? We should just do the pineapple one since we all have it right now. We just that's do. Right. It if, right since now. we have it, if we haven't drank it, I'd say why not? Right now, yeah. bonus analysis. A bonus? I haven't done any history on that beer. Yeah, we can, we don't want to conflict with any other chat. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, leave it alone. All right. So, yeah. Uh, finishing thoughts. I, I don't think I'd want to buy a six pack of this, but I'm glad to have tried it. It's okay. I love coffee. I'm. I like this, but I, I, I think it's a little weak. Chris, any thoughts? I'm drinking. I'm drinking uh, mine in Amsterdam glass because why not? My yeah, I got a Arison Teku. My final thoughts on this one is pretty much like yours. I mean, I'm glad I got to try it. I mean, it's the first year it's been bottled, so why not? It's kind of like a first time for everyone here on the panel having this out of the bottle, which is cool, and I and I appreciate that. But, again, I wish this was in a single. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody else minutes, notice that this is kind of flat? It nope. doesn't mm -hmm. have a whole lot of head to it. There's not a lot of carbonation. It, but... Anyway. Yeah. All right. I didn't pour mine all the. I didn't pour mine right down the middle. So. Uh, didn't pour it down the middle. So you're wondering, like, it didn't cascade. You, you were, yeah, you, you got some. Yeah, I didn't cascade. Nitro you this, pour down the nitro pour this. One? All right. Let's uh, let's sign off here. Thanks for everybody for watching our analysis of Imperial Coffee Porter from uh, Mill Street Brewing, in Toronto, Ontario, and tune in next week when we take a look at Stella. And it's funny, it's funny you mentioned Stella because uh, I think Chris Peters actually killed somebody named Stella. But we'll just talk about that later. Who who right. will speak for those murdered pickle women? Right, right, right. <laughs>